There is no better way to understand a chess structure than to play over the games of the world champions and see how they handle the structure. In our game today, we have two world champions, Magnus Carlsen with the white pieces, Vichy Anand with the black pieces, and they play the Carlsbad structure, and this is a very revealing game that really helps us understand this Carlsbad structure. This game was played in 2013 at the Toll Memorial in Moscow. Carlsen has white, Anand has black. Let's begin. D4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, and Anand responds with bishop to b4, the Nimzo Indian defense. Carlson plays e3, uh, a main line against the Nimzo. And after castling knight g to e2, the idea, of course, is to recapture on c3 so his pawns don't get doubled. D5 attacking the center, a3, forcing the bishop to make a decision. And Anand decides to retreat the bishop to e7. Why give it up for the knight if you're not going to double the pawns? Pawn takes, and Anon takes with the knight, which means our structure is not quite defined just yet. Carlson plays bishop to d2. Knight to d7 is played. g3 to set the bishop at g2 on the long diagonal. b6 to counter that bishop, and also it's blocked in by its own e6 pawn anyway. That's where it needs to go. Knight takes d5. e takes d5. Now, we have the Carlsbad structure on the board, and that is defined by these two pawns for white and these two pawns for black, and you have a half-open C file for white and a half-open C file for black. You can also have this position with colors reversed, of course. Uh, the most common openings to create this structure are the Queen's Gambit declined exchange variation, and also the Karo Khan exchange variation gives us this structure with colors reversed, but in this case we've gotten into it through a Nimzo Indian, which just speaks to how common the Carlsbad structure is and how important it is to know how to play the Carlsbad structure. So let's make a couple more moves and then, then we'll take a look. Carlson plays bishop to g2, Anon plays bishop to b7. Now, there's a, a rule about the Carlsbad structure. If you're the side that has the two central pawns, these d and e pawns, then you want to make sure your queen's bishop, the dark squared bishop for white, is developed outside of the pawn chain. But in this case, Carlson has his bishop inside the pawn chain, which is not something you want. So how does he solve that problem? Well, unsurprisingly, he solves it brilliantly. He plays the move bishop to b4 directly challenging the bishop at e7. Now, at first glance, it looks like Anand can just take the bishop and create these two weak, isolated pawns. However, this actually is a good position for Carlson. After, say, queen to e7, attacking b4, queen to b3, defending at knight f6 castles, what Carlson will do, he'll move his f1 rook to c1, and both rooks will be on half-open files, pressuring a7 and c7, and Carlson just has a fantastic position. White is clearly better here, despite the pawn weaknesses on the b-file, so Anand does not do that. Another option would be to play c5 to create the hanging pawns, but after takes, takes, bishop comes to c3, has this nice diagonal, and this is not a good hanging pawns position for black. So Anand plays knight to f6 instead, castles rook e8, rook to c1 on the half-open file, c6, bishop takes, rook takes, and now Rook to e1. So let's before he plays that, let, let's ask ourselves a basic question. What is what are the plans that White has in this position? There are two main plans. Now there are a lot of other things people have done over the years with this position, but two main plans. The first is the minority attack. That is where White takes these two pawns, which are a minority versus this pawn majority. And white seeks to exchange these two pawns for these two pawns, so that the A and B pawns for both sides are gone. And black would be left with a backwards pawn on C6. Let's clear that off. A backwards pawn on C6 and a weak square at C5. In this particular position, that doesn't work quite as well because of a non-structure. And if Carlson tried that. Anand could take, and d5 is defended well enough. I mean, Carlson would have a symbolic advantage, but he'd be very hard-pressed to win. The second plan for white 
is to advance in the center with F3 and E4 and try to get a central pawn mass or advantage. This was a plan pioneered by Botvinnik. Kasparov uh, played it. So Carlson has not committed to either plan yet. Here he plays rook to e1. Again, he hasn't fully committed, but it looks like he's probably going with the central plan. Queen d6, knight f4. The bishop goes to c8. If c5, again, pawn takes, pawn takes. Queen c2, rook c8. And, and white would have maximum pressure against the hanging pawns, so Anand does not want to do that. He reroutes the bishop to c8. Wants to put it on e6 to sort of solidify the center, remove any pins along the long diagonal. Carlson responds with queen to a4, hitting c6, rook to c7 defending, and now f3. Carlson begins the plan of expanding in the center. Anand's pieces are not ideally placed for this breakthrough, and so Anand is doing it now. Now, Anand plays bishop to e6. What are some of his options? Well, he could play c5 here. But if he does, Carlson responds with e4 and has a great position. If he takes on e4, then just f e4, and Carlson would be threatening pawn to e5, forking the queen and knight, and also unveiling the g2 bishop against the rook at a8. Anand would lose material. If he played c d4, then simply queen d4. Again, threatening e5, and there's a pin on this pawn, so Anand could not take it because he'd lose his queen. That would not work real well. And then after e4, if bishop e6, pawn takes rook takes, and rook c to d1 with maximum pressure against this isolated d-pawn, which is still pinned against the queen. So Anand responds with bishop to e6. Now e4, d e4. Queen d7 was probably the better move, although he's still in trouble. After e5, c5, queen d7, knight d7, knight to e2, and Carlson has, a, again, a great position. He can advance his f-pawn to strengthen the center. He can take, and the knight can retake on d4, and uh, would be very well placed. But d e4 is what Anand plays, and that does not work at all. Pawn takes, again threatening e5, forking the queen and the knight. He plays queen to d7 to sidestep that fork. Uh, another more aggressive option would have been b5, but then Carlson just plays the queen to b4, and after queen takes, pawn takes. We have the same type of structure we saw earlier, with the isolated double pawns being strong and opening up lines against black's position. If rook a c8, rook c3 to double, e5, and c6 would be under far too much pressure to survive. So Anand plays queen to d7, and like any position, if you have full control of the center, the prospects of a tactical breakthrough are very real, and that's the case here, and Carlson goes ahead and plays d5. The pawn takes queen d7, rook d7, knight takes e6, pawn takes e6, and in this key move, Carlson plays bishop to h3, hitting the e6 pawn, which would of course win the exchange by attacking the king and the rook at the same time. Rook to e8 was an option for Anand. After ed5, though, what move can he make? I mean, if he takes with the pawn, he would just lose a rook. After knight takes rook, bishop would take on d7. Uh, if rook d to d8, just bishop to e6 check. After king h8, rook e to d1, which is with an easily winning endgame. So Anand plays the move. Excuse me, let me get this here. King to h8, so there are no checks. After e5, knight g8, bishop takes e6, the rook goes back to d8. It's a little imprecise. Rook e7 was a, was a bit better, but still not good. Bishop takes pawn, rook d8, bishop b3, and Magnus would still have a, uh, a winning position. Uh, but instead, he plays the rook to d8, and that allows Magnus to get control of the seventh rank, which he does immediately with rook to c7. And after d4, Magnus plays this very strong move, bishop to d7. That clears the way for Magnus's e-pawn to advance. And Carlson can just play rook e1 to d1, take the pawn at d4, and the game would be over. And in this position, Anand resi resigned. 
Again, a master class in how to handle the Carlsbad structure. It's rare you see players this strong give such a clear guide as to how, a pl how to play a chess structure. Thank you for joining us at Chess Dog. See you again soon. Bye.